Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna continue our discussion of HDR Effects Pro 2 by Nick Software by using it as a Lightroom plugin. And as you can see, I'm in Lightroom right now, and we're going to send this bracketed set of three images over to HDR Effects Pro 2. Uh, this image is the one that my camera considered to be properly exposed. And then I have an image on either side of that, one that is one stop underexposed and this one that is one stop overexposed. Now I want to send them all over to Nick Color, or I'm sorry, HDRFX Pro 2. Now to do that, you need to select all the images that you want to send over. So I'm just going to click on the first one and hold the shift key down and click on the last one down here in the film strip. So they're all selected. Now, those of you that are familiar with Lightroom and familiar with plugins know that most often to send an image into a plugin, you would probably right click on the image and go down to edit in. If you do that, you'll find that HDR Effects Pro 2 is not listed here. Uh, furthermore, uh, you could right click again on the film strip itself and go to edit in and it's not going to be listed and you could go up to photo edit in and it won't be listed in order to send these over into hdr effects pro 2 you have to do something slightly different go to the file menu then go down to export with preset and there at under export with preset you'll find under the DxO heading, assuming you're using the DxO version of Nick's uh, software, you'll find HDR Effects Pro 2. So click on that, and when you do, you'll see that up in the top left-hand corner, you'll get a progress bar, and it says it's processing three photos. Now you may remember, I mentioned in the last video, that HDR Effects Pro 2 does not work on RAW files. These are raw files. These are Nikon raw files. Furthermore, even if you had JPEGs here or TIFF files here, it's not going to work on the original images. It's going to create its own TIFF files for it to work on so that it's not uh, destructive. It's not affecting your original images in any way whatsoever. So it's going to temporarily create a set of TIFF files and merge them and come up with this. Now, it came up with a warning for this, and it says one or more images in the series have different sizes. HDR Effects Pro 2 will automatically crop the images to have the same common size and aspect ratio. I forgot to mention, and I should have mentioned, that in this set of images that I have over here in Lightroom, the only processing I did to it was lens corrections and nothing as far as the basic panel, tone curve, nothing else, except I did crop 
And what I really did in crop is I hand held these shots and they were all a little bit crooked. So I straightened them by clicking the auto button. So I had Lightroom straighten the images um, automatically for me. In doing so, it made them slightly different in size from one another. So therefore, when now we're in um, HDRFX Pro 2, it's coming up with this warning. It's no big deal. HDRFX Pro 2 is automatically going to crop them so they fit, which is great. Now, uh, because it was handheld, we're going to align it. So I'm going to keep that checked. There's nothing moving in the image. There's, you know, if you were outside, I mentioned in the last video, if you have a breeze and trees are moving or grasses are moving, or if someone is in the scene moving between bracketed exposures, you should click ghost reduction. And I'm going to leave that unclicked. And I'll leave chromatic aberration clicked, even though I don't think there is any. It doesn't hurt to have it clicked. It's just going to take a little longer to create our HDR. So there's our sample images. There's our images above. And we're just going to click Create HDR. And it will go through the process of removing the chromatic aberration, aligning the exposures, and then creating our high dynamic ranged image. And as I mentioned, it applies automatically that first uh, preset uh, in the bunch. As soon as it does it, it should finish. And then we'll go from there. And I did mention in the last video that in this video, I want to talk more specifically about control points and how you would use them uh, to do selective adjustments in your image. Now, if we go up to the preset library, I mentioned that it usually will add that default one right there. And that's it. It added this default um, preset. And I actually like that. I think that uh, rendered nice. Uh, the stained glass windows are, are nicely done, not blown out. That's the main reason a, a lot of times we'll use uh, HDR in real estate photography or if you're doing the inside, especially of a church or a cathedral like this is, uh, where you don't want the windows blown out, uh, you would use um, bracket your images and create an HDR image so that the uh, stained glass windows are rendered properly. So I'm going to go with this. Um, I'm not going to adjust any of the global adjustments because I like actually what it did. The one thing I do want to adjust though, uh, if you were inside of this cathedral, it was very bright like this, but the walls were a little bit whiter than what is being rendered in the HDR. Now I could come down to color and adjust uh, temperature and tint, but that would affect the windows as well. And the windows were very blue. So I don't really want to uh, change the temperature or tint of the entire image because it will start to render the stained glass windows improperly. So I'm going to use selective adjustments. And in HDR Effects Pro, selective adjustments are control points. And I've talked very thoroughly about control points in several other videos. But we're going to do it again here. Now, I want to do something with the actual white walls here. I want to make them whiter, basically. So I'm going to grab a control point by clicking right there. Then go over the image, and we'll start over here on the left. And we're going to apply the control point right there. Now, wherever you click, what HDR Effects Pro, does, Pro 2 does, it looks for uh, tone, texture, and color. And whatever is similar in tone, texture, and cover, color in this area of influence where I have this circle, that will be affected by the adjustments. And if you hover over the adjustments, you'll see a little tooltip of what each slider does. There's exposure, there's contrast, there's saturation, there's structure. And you'll notice there's a little triangle down here. If you click on that, you'll get more adjustments. We'll have blacks, whites, temperature, tint, and method strength. Now I want to go up here to temperature. And I want to make this a little cooler. So if I move it to the left, you'll see it starts to cool off that white. And it actually, or the wall, and it's actually making it a bit 
whiter and that's what I want it because it wasn't this warmer tone of white it was just a bit cooler and that's the way it was so my area of influence again is where that circle is and it will predominantly adjust in that circle and it will start to fade out the adjustment as it gets towards the edge of that circle and outside of that circle so if you look at where it's adjusted now, it is slightly affecting up here. And the way you could look at this is if you go over here to where it says control points, and you can see control point one, you'll see there's a little box there. If you check it, you'll see that your image is rendered in this kind of negative look. Wherever it is white is where it's being adjusted, where the adjustment is happening. The more white it is, the more it's being adjusted. The less white it is, the more gray it is the less it's being adjusted. And where it's black, it's not being adjusted at all. So you could see that even though the area of influence is that circle, it is extending beyond the circle a bit. It is affecting other things past that circle. But that's okay. So we're going to turn this off by clicking right there. So we're back to our original view. But I want to extend this across the entire white wall here. So I could get a new control point and just keep adding them and adjusting the color temperature. But I think an easier way is just to duplicate this control point. It's very easy to do uh, with uh, Nick software. Just hold in the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And we're just going to drag this to there. Then I'm going to drag another one over here. I'm again holding in the Alt or Option key and then we'll drag another one over here. Now I have four control points with the exact same settings and really all I did was adjust the temperature slider. I made it a bit cooler. And now if I click here and get this negative look, you could see how predominantly the white is on the white wall and that's where I want it. And you could see, excuse me, the uh, stained glass windows mainly are black. So that means that the adjustment isn't happening on the stained gla glass windows mainly. It is uh, maybe a little bit on this one. The way what you could do to remove it, there isn't a negative control point like there is in Color Effects Pro 4. But what you can do is just grab a new control point and put it over this. When you put a new control point over something, all the adjustments are kind of zeroed out. So you're going to be removing any uh, of the other control points from that area. And again, it's going to look for tone, texture, and color. And it's going to mainly affect that. And you can see how this control point is mainly affecting the window. Now I could bring the area of influence down so it's more so just on the window. And then I could duplicate this control point by holding the Alt or Option key in and dragging it over to this window and putting it in a spot so it looks like it's definitely affecting the, the glass of the window. Keep moving it around. And not so much the, let's say, the wall around the window. I'm having a hard time finding that magical spot. Let's go with right there, maybe. And then maybe bring it out a little bit. Yeah, let's just go with that. So that is that control point. So that's how you would remove the adjustment a control point did from an area near that control point. Just grab a new control point that is neutral as soon as you put a new control point down, not a copy, but a new control point, that new point is that new control point is neutral. It's basically all the global adjustments, and that will better render your image, I guess, uh, the way you'd like it. So we'll click there to turn everything off, and I think that looks pretty decent right there. So um, the wall is whiter. I could turn off the selective adjustments by clicking on this little checkbox. There's before. You could see how much warmer that was. And there's after. 
And that is a better, I think, rendition of what I actually saw while I was there. I am going to go to uh, tonality a bit here. And I'm going to see, I'm going to pull open the shadows just a bit. Or the highlights, I'm sorry, just a bit. And maybe bring up exposure. Because this, um, this cathedral was very bright inside. So I am going to turn exposure up a little bit. And that is a better rendering of actually what I saw when I was there. Now, you'll remember from our last video, I mentioned if you click save when you're using HDRFX Pro 2 as a standalone product, um, it's maybe difficult for you to find where it saved your uh, image. When you use it as a Lightroom plugin, you don't have to worry about that. It's going to save the image in the same folder and or collection that your original images were in. So let's just click save and you'll see that it's going to be saving the image. And when it's done, HDRFX Pro 2 will close down. And once it closed down, um, I probably will have to go back into Lightroom myself. Even though Lightroom's open, I don't think it's going to. Maybe it'll make a layer out of me. No, see, I'm right. So we'll have to go back to Lightroom. And you can see there is our image. It opened back up into uh, Lightroom. And uh, you could see it has the name of the first raw file I used, which is underscore DSC 0602. And then it puts an underscore HDR dot TIFF. So there's our rendering uh, of our image. It put it in, um, it put it in a, a, a collection of its own called January 10th, 2019. Um, so I could take it and just put it up here with the other images if I'd like. So there it is right there. Move it to the end. So here's our three original images. And there's the original one I mentioned. The first image was uh, underscore DSC 0602.nef. It's Nikon RAW file. That was one stop underexposed. This one was supposedly properly exposed. This one was one stop overexposed. And then here is our HDR rendering of that scene. And I think it did a really nice job on this uh, church here. So that's how you use HDR Effects Pro 2 as a Lightroom plugin. In our next video, I'll demonstrate how you would use it as a Photoshop plugin. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.